Good morning, everyone. We, um, we're going to be heading on our way to do an install and uh, like a rough tune because the weather's kind of crappy and uh, we'll see if it clears up and then customer wants to take the vehicle out. But it is Fox Body Mustang. Um, he just did uh, updated, uh, changed cylinder heads and changed the cam. Originally, it was tuned with an SCT burn chip and customer decided he wanted to try the standalone route so he picked up do-it-yourself auto-tune um, plug-and-play unit for MegaSquirt so it's MS2 based I believe MS2 or 3 can't really remember um, so we're gonna get over there we're gonna do the install and do the base tune startup tune and base tune you know let's see it and uh, I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride all right let's get going See, the weather is not the best. So, let this uh, old girl warm up a sec. Seat auto on, of course. And uh, I'm gonna load his address into the phone and uh, be on our way. It's not very far, but uh, you know, being the mobile tuner mobile mechanic as I am brought a couple tools with me got a couple got the heat shrink heat shrink style butt connectors I am um, I uh, really really good crimpers and just a small uh, quarter inch set that set is awesome like take that thing everywhere with me don't mind the door panel it's SN 197 problems <laughs> so let's get on the road GPS says about 15 minutes. We'll get, we'll, get, we'll get there. So, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, the advantages of the Mega Squirt. A lot of people seem to not like it. They're like, oh, why don't you just go Holly? You know, why don't you just Holly, Holly, Holly? Holly's great, but this customer wanted to retain his factory harness, which is in really good shape, and just, you know, wanted a little simpler option. The Holly is nice but uh, it's quite expensive and you know there's a lot, lot involved with it because it comes with, the, comes with the tone harness and you gotta you know redo all the wiring it's, it's a lot more involved so this customer just wanted to keep it a little bit simple and you know that's the route we're gonna go still has great great capability uh, I had an MS MS uh, MS gold box I should say on um, on my fox on my fox body, uh, granted it was LS, but uh, I raced that car tons of years with that setup, and um, yeah, it never gave me a problem, ever, never ever gave me a problem. So it's a really good setup. The, the guy doesn't race the car a whole lot, really just screws around. And um, once you see it, you're gonna. It's it's a really nice car. Uh, it's got a Vor, uh, V1 Vortex supercharger on it. He just did a set of heads and changed the cam. And currently, well, I guess yeah, currently it still has the SCT chip plugged into the back of the stock ECU. And while it runs, uh, he hooked up his wideband, and it's way rich. It's way way rich. And. Uh, Locally, we don't have anybody that has the older, you know, hardware to do burn chips anymore. So he just opted to go with um, with the Mega Square. So we're that's the route we're gonna go. There's a lot, a lot of cool options with it. Uh, he'll gain <clears throat> he'll gain a two step. There is a, I'm gonna integrate his wideband for him, so it'll have. Uh, Y-band, uh, closed loop fueling control. Uh, if it was a turbo car, there's a boost control, but uh, being you know uh, supercharged, there's no boost control. Uh, if he wants to add flex fuel, he can add a flex fuel sensor. And you know we, we're up here in Upper PA, and there, there's stations around here that have uh, you know E85. If he wants to go that route, 
Um, I don't know if this fuel system will support it. I have to double check when we get there. But, like I said, on our way, should be there in probably about 10 minutes now. Been talking a little bit. And uh, I'll show you around the car a little bit and uh, bring you through the process of uh, removing the stock ECU and removing and, you know, installing the Megasport. It's, it's pretty simple. There is one vacuum line and three or four wire connections. Honestly, you don't even need the wire connections if you don't want to add them. They're add-ons, like the, the two-step wiring um, and the wideband wiring. They're add-ons. You don't need them, but they're highly recommended, especially the, the wideband one is, is really recommended. So, let's uh, stop talking. Let's get there. So this is his car. Like I said, box body hatch, really, really clean setup. And um, like I said, he just changed the cylinder heads to an aluminum version. Uh, I think I believe they're I believe they're um, trick flow trick flow heads. Mm -hmm. Old V1, non non intercooled. So we'll have to keep power. You know, pretty conservative. And then yeah show you the this is everything that comes in the box this is the one cable that does connect this is basically the, all the wiring you I say wiring wiring you have to do it literally is a comms port and it comes with all the pins and everything for all the add-on wiring like I said for the for at flex fuel if you want to do fan output you could do you can run your fan through it tons tons of options I'll show you once we uh, get it set up I'll show you and then this is the base tune that they come loaded with it uh, I mean I'll probably start with that because it's got all the, all the TFI settings and everything and then this is the only other thing you have to run this is the vacuum line because I'll show you what's well, it's cool That is the port for all the add-ons. And what's kind of cool is that is actually a knock sensor um, input. You can set up, put up a set of earphones and listen for a knock. But that is the stock 
Fox body um, pin, like a connector. And then there is the built-in, it's built-in four, four bar map sensor. You can handle a ton of boosts. So let's, um, let's dig into it. We're going to basically the factory computer. Make sure that doesn't hit or anything. No. The factory computer lives back behind here. So take the glove box out, this panel comes out, and then the blower blower motor comes out. Blower box, I should say, comes out. And then uh, once we get all that out, we can get to the stock ECU. And I'll show you guys that when we get there. All right, couple bolts. The blower box, I guess you could call it. It's got a 7 16 bolt up here. You can kind of see the bracket, 7 16 bolt up here. And then there's two, usually they're, um, these two bolts. Usually they're seven mils on this car, they're eight mils, whatever. But slowly get this out of the way. There is the vacuum line here. And then you follow it around. You have the blower motor connector. Make sure you disconnect that. If I can do it one-handed. Oh, it's connected broken. Let's see if I can. <laughs> oh, that worked. All right, sorry about that. Went for a little ride. Feed this one around through here. And there you go. Take this big old box out. Put it over here. The rest of the parts. And now, once we peel the carpet back a little bit, we can see the original computer. And then we also needed to pull that up down so we can get access to the factory grommet, which is right here, because we're gonna run the vacuum line through that grommet. All right, a little more work, and I'm gonna get the ECU out. <laughs> All right, a single 10 millimeter bolt. And get around the way. There she is, factory computer. This is actually a 3M, a little bit different uh, factory calibration than A9L or an A9P. They were the go-to computers uh, back in the day. A9L was the five-speed computer and the A9P was the, um, was the automatic computer. And then as you see, see it's got the chip. Take a quick look. Move it this way. It's like I'm just I'm digging up archives. Very, very old school technology. Because if you wanted to get your, there we go. Come on, come on, there we go. Jeez. So if you wanted to get your vehicle tuned, you literally had to have the ECU out, like down and out, that you'd make a dyno pull or whatever. And then um, and then they would, you know, pull the chip, literally physically put it on the bench, burn it, and then put it back in, try again. There was no real time tuning with this style, which is a big downside to this. It worked, it just took a really long time tuning. It should just, oh, see, just hooked up like that. This is actually an SCT style. See, it's got this connector on it. You could, let's see. You gotta focus. Yeah, I just wanna focus. 
ครับนั่นคือจริงๆ super chips super chips S N S E T so basically with this connector you were able to do multiple tunes um, usually there's a little little knob on your dash and you can have multiple tunes if you wanted a you know a race tune with uh, race fuel you can have it and flip the switch so it was pretty cool but still very old school technology it really plugs into the back right there so let's uh, let's go get the new one. There they are, side by side. So, like I said, Do It Yourself Auto Tune does a really good job. It's in the same physical size as the factory computer. So we'll be able to plug it right back into where it was, and tuck it up in the dash. And you'll never know. And like I said, see the connectors? Connectors are the same. And then this is your live data and tuning, and your map tensor. They're the only connections besides the main 10 millimeter that you need to do. That's it. Let's uh, unbox the rest of the stuff. Get the laptop set up because there are instructions and we'll take a look at them. All right, so we've got the computer loaded up and have their software. So here is the optional port that they give you with all of the wiring. So as you can see, you can go through, make it a little bigger. If you wanted to add, so there's optional clutch switches, there's tack outputs if you want a bigger tack, um, boost control solenoid, knock sensor input, CAN bus, which is really cool. If you have a, I had um, a Banks gauge and I used the CAN bus and it literally read all of the factory, all of the data. There's launch control input. Um, there is external map sensor. So if we surpass the factory or the four bar that's in it, we have that. And then there is, you can see oxygen sensor input, that one. And then there is optional relay control, which is really cool. So if we wanted to turn a fan on, you know, something that we wanted the ECU to control, we can use either one of those. And then, uh, yeah. So we're going to set this up. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna pin them all just so we have them all and tie them out of the way that we don't use. So I'm gonna make this connector now. All right, it's really hard to see, but there are numbers on the sides, right on the sides, that tell you what pin you know it is. And then going back to up here, it corresponds with that. So like I said, we're gonna put all these in and then tuck away the ones we don't use. All right, about halfway there. The biggest thing is you wanna make sure these connectors are completely round. So when they go in, they just need to go in and you push and you'll hit you'll feel it click and then you look you make sure everything is flat and then that way you'll know everything is fully seated so good bit in got a couple more and then we'll uh, basically tie away the ones we're not using and have just the ones we want to use all right everything is assembled the connectors all together Plugged it into the ECU, tighten everything down, and I have the two I want to use for now out. So when the ECU sits in there, it's gonna sit up like this. So you can't really get to this wiring. This is all the way up in the car. So got everything connected. Let's go put it in the car. All right. Everything is loosely installed. Got the computer in there. I have the wideband wiring connected. I have, this is the data cable. And then I also have the map sensor wiring going up through the factory grommet. Coming up over to here, to this connection. This connection goes right to the intake behind the throttle body and then down to the blow off. 
So, that's it. So now I'm gonna go grab the computer, hook into it, make a, a project file, and we're gonna see if we have connectivity. All right, got Tuner Studio open. I'm gonna do create a new project. We're gonna name the file. Then key if key is on, we're going to detect the ECU. It should find it. There she is. Accept. Next. And then these all these settings we're gonna leave as default. Next. Tested the port, it is successful. Next. So this is the dashes um, they give you. I personally like just the standard standard one, but I guess we're gonna we're gonna use the one that they included. We're gonna use this one. Finish. There we go. It read the factory settings. So now the first thing we have to do is calibrate TPS. I am not on the throttle, so we'll get get current. And then we're going to go full throttle. Get current. And then hit accept. And now TPS is correct. Okay. And then... Now we are going to go over to the base settings. Well, first thing, before we do anything, we're going to go over here, save as, and just base, base file, base file, save it. So now we have the exact tune up from do it yourself. So go back over to base settings, engine settings, required fuel, and these are the factory settings. It's interesting, it says 305, <laughs> and then 20 pound injectors and air fuel ratio. So I have to get with Josh real quick, make sure we'll see what injectors he has, and we're gonna and see if it's still a 302 cubic inch or if it's not. So I'm gonna pause right now and I'll be back. All right, got the interior completely back together. Rehung the Y band. So now we're gonna get into actually tuning this thing a little bit. I wanted to get it to idle before I start. Um, well, I'll, I'm gonna double check the timing. You always have to verify the commanded timing versus the actual timing. And I can, if it's off, I'll show you there's a way to adjust it in the uh, in tuner studio here real quick i'll show you it's in ignition settings in the trigger wizard basically changes the offset angle and usually you'll set it there's a fixed timing you'll do in ignition settings in here so normally it uses the table so what you would do is you check here and go to fixed timing and then you can put in the amount you want, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, whatever. Whatever you have marked on your balancer. Usually, Fox bodies, they're 10 degrees. So they have a 10 degree mark. So you'll change that to 10 degrees and then go out and actually you know, hit it with a gun and see what it's at. If it's not there, then you close this. And like I said, go back to the trigger wizard and you keep adjusting up or down depending on where the offset angle it doesn't matter where the offset angle mat goes it's just you have to match this timing like when the engine's running this will be 10 20 whatever you have it set at this timing what you see on a timing light at the actual crank that way you know your commanded timing is your actual timing if you don't check that and 
especially if you're boosted and you go, here, I'll open the ignition table. It won't know where you are in the table. Like, you see, if it's commanding, I haven't adjusted yet, this is the base tune. If it's commanding 34 degrees and it's off four or five degrees, you know, you can do some damage. But before we get into all this, I actually have to rescale it for uh, boost anyway. So, but we're going to get it to idle first and go from there. All right, so um, it's now darker. We have been tuning this thing and kind of fighting. I think the wide band has given us kind of false readings. So we're going to call it for today. But the car idles, everything's good. It just, um, it's not responding how it should with the inputs I'm doing. Like the wide band's not showing it. Plus it's not reading correctly in the mega squirt. So you can't really use uh, closed loop fuel correction or anything. So I have to, we'll have to uh, check that. Cause it is an autometer one. It's like an autometer style. It's an older, older wide band. So again, could just be fighting issues with that. But for today, I think we're gonna call it. So we'll uh, end it here as a, as a part one. And uh, if you guys wanna see part two, subscribe and uh, catch you on the next one.